the best one copaint solution in the gaming industry just got bigger. Since their release, hobbyists have been begging for more. And after extensive development with feedback from customers, we did just that. Speedpaint has grown to include 90 colors in total, including 10 of the industry's first one coat metallics. With boxed options to suit every budget, whether you're just getting started or if you must have the most wanted Speedpaint colors. Soon you'll be able to sample or replenish your speed paints when our beautiful and comprehensive display hits your friendly local game store. Including all 90 colors and a highly requested larger 100 milliliter bottle of speed paint medium. Find speed paint in stores this summer or pre order today at www.thearmypainter.com. Hi everyone, my name is Mike. I am the CEO here at Dogmite and we are super pumped to bring you the D20 tribute screen here on Backerkit. We've successfully crowdfunded 25 projects and have been making TTRPG gear for a decade. We are a small dedicated team of craftspeople that make everything on site here in Michigan. If this is your first time hearing about us, check out dogmite.com to get a feel for what we do. Thank you for taking a moment to check out the video. The D20 screen is an amazing piece of gear and we are so excited to partner with Backerkit to bring the project to life. We look forward to connecting with the community and getting your feedback on the project. Thank you for your support. It means the world to us. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. There's bits and pieces everywhere. How are we all doing? We, we've landed at, le at last, uh, hopefully in one piece. Uh, the internet world is going nuts. Um, not over us, unfortunately, just with other things going on. I don't know. Anyway, how are we all doing? There's JD in the corner. Hi, little JD. How are you doing? I'm very small today. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Would it help if I make my screen bigger? <laughs> Kent, Kent, did you manage to figure that out? Like uh, last time we were having problems. Sure luck, I think, this time. I, I think I just clicked <laughs> the right button and went, oh, hey, look, it's connected. Uh, oh, there you go. Fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. Right. We are, um, I'm just going to push a few buttons and see what happens. Steve, how are you doing? 
I, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, Twitch is on, so yeah, we are we are broadcasting. Uh, we're just a little bit. We're, we're Sound is going a bit out of sync and, and jerking around a little bit. So uh, yeah, yeah, just in, internet problems. It doesn't matter so when we're painting, painting though. It only matters when it only no. works when we're talking or doesn't work when we're talking. As soon as yeah. we start painting, it doesn't matter because we <laughs> kind of paint like that anyway. Because um, right. it'll be like this, and then you see the top of my head. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, hi everyone. Welcome. This is the Great British Brush Off. Uh, this is part two. Uh, we are painting this uh, this beast. Um, I'm just gonna let me switch some cameras around for you so you can see. So this is. Does it work? No. Yes. There we go. <gasps> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing's working. Look, look at the delay on some of that. Um, there we go. I'm, I don't know if Steve's pushing buttons. Why I'm pushing buttons? But I'm, pushing I'm buttons. not. I'm not. Look, both um, my hands are above this. Is, this is my attempt anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we we definitely there are some delay issues going on because uh, I'm I've got some of those too. But anyway, we are painting the frameworks Balor for my friends over at Wizkids. This was my attempt. Um, let's swap the cameras so we can see JD. Wow, that's ri you finished. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that looks incredible. It oh, look look, incredible is this the first one or the second one? This is the same one I worked on last time. Wow. Uh, so it, it does. It does look amazing. The old one is looking incredible. I love that sword. Thank you. I still need to work on the sword. I need to do the uh, the gem and the base, and I need to clean up the flames down here a little bit. But yeah, the this section down here needs some work too. But yeah, otherwise I'm really yeah. close. <laughs> so far removed from that stage. <laughs> There's mine. I'm included together. Yeah. <laughs> I well, you know, I have like three part, nights so a week is, for, for like five hours a night where I can just like, I have nothing to do but paint. So, you know. Uh, that, that looks really, really I good. I just noticed his, 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 his other wing isn't there. So he's yeah, missing it a wing. popped off while I was uh, working on it the last time I took some pictures of it. And um, just for convenience uh, sake, I've right. left it off. But yeah, that's that's what it would look like with the wing on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just moving. Just moving <laughs> We're just all over the place here. There you go. So it, it is going uh, somewhere. Now let's let's have a look at what we're doing. So this is just to refresh our memories. This is the render uh, from WizKids. <laughs> this is what you actually get on on the box itself. Um, and it, it it's it's a stunning. All right, it's not even a miniature. It's a large piece. It's kind of it's not exactly a, like a diorama, but it's more like a like a sculpted statue. Um, mm -hmm. it's, your players will be amazed when this comes out on the gaming table, but even once this is done, it, I'm just going to put it behind me. This is it's going on a shelf. It's going on display. Um, I think it looks amazing. Uh, this is the coloured version. Again, this is the artwork that you see on the box mm -hmm. uh, and available. And then we have the Den of Imagination. You got it right that time. This is their painted copy. I did. It's not a Den of Thieves. <laughs> There we go. Uh, but Den of Eves does sound cool, and uh, it does, this it was this was it. Uh, this is this is where we actually where I actually started. This is my photos. You can see these on our Instagram page, uh, which is instagram.com slash band of badges. You can check it out there uh, if you want to see kind of painting progress. If you like, uh, you can you can have a look at that. Um, and then as <laughs> as I kind of successfully started to glue the pieces together um there he is without a head <laughs> it is it's just, it's stunning but also be careful because some of these bits are sharp um i think several times i managed to impale myself on the balor um but one of the best features of it is the fact that you get all of these um extra pieces so you can you can have different horns on the head. You can have a different weapon in his left hand. In his right hand, you kind of have the whip, the fire whip. 
So I think based on that, we've all done different versions, which is great, which is what I want to see. Um, and we have to wait and see how it comes together. But this is it. This is part two. We will hopefully, fingers crossed, be finishing these today. Um, oh yeah, there's my there's my base of this thing. Finishing today, which is coming out really really well. <laughs> I well I'm yes maybe. I think JD is already finished. I think that one's done. I, I could probably put this on the table and, and well, nobody would notice the here. little flaws that I'm looking at and going, that's so obvious. <laughs> you, you, uh, you can't, you kind of get, everything gets drawn away from everything else. It's the flames and the sword and the flame whip. Those bits that are stand out. And I know you spent ages doing all of the, the glazing on um, the upper portion of the arm and the face last week. And they're the bits that we see when we're painting it, and nobody else gives a two hoots about when you put it on the right. table. <laughs> That's why yeah, I tell yes. people, you know, people will like show me a, a picture of, of a miniature they painted, and it's not very good. And I'm like, hold it out here, you know, see it from this distance, and it looks fine. That's that's the distance on the tabletop. Yeah, don't worry about that. Definitely. And just like you know, with human I, nature, I, I, we all see our own flaws like they're really glaringly obvious and nobody else ever notices that's what i'm trying to do as well is uh as i don't know how many hours i've clocked up now I'm probably i'm probably over 60 hours but uh i'm learning different techniques and that's the bit i like the most it's just trying to learn different things of how i can apply it apply it in different ways and having the variety of minis obviously we're going to beef up uh whiskers now but having, the, having the variety uh they're stunning they really are and the frameworks i think just take it to a whole other level um again we've mentioned variety but they are they are superb thank you right. see you I mentioned last time you how are you doing actually. steve I'm, I'm just starting now uh, I was just going to say, you mentioned gone, last time you was on uh, JD gone. about... Everyone's gone. We can hear you. I can hear you both. I think it must be Dave then, if you can hear me. Yep, Steve. I'm, I'm, I might be massively behind or something. I think I am. I am sending these messages from eight hours in your past, so that does make sense. We are on... <laughs> yeah, it's we blame it on time travel. Steve, that I let you you can, like just, you can talk and control things because me pushing buttons doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was going to say was last time he was on JD, he talks about frameworks wave two, mm -hmm. and how this time round they're shipping with enough pieces to make two core models. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, so that, that's one of the things that Dave and I have always liked about the WizKids, uh, like Deep Cuts range, is you get two figures. So you get your starter level and you get your higher level pose. Um, so, that's, so that's great that you get that in uh, in Frameworks. Uh, It'll be something two. similar. You'll you'll definitely have two poses to choose from. I don't know that, uh, you know, we've made one that's, you know, like distinctly radically different so that you look at it and say, you know, oh, this is the high level version of this character. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, nearly every single pack now has two miniatures in it. If there was space on the frame, we went ahead and added a second torso and some additional heads. And wherever possible, some other little bits. Nice. So, yeah. Torso one, torso two, back, back, and terrain pieces. I noticed there, if you can still hear me. I can and uh, the, the box doesn't say frameworks. No, that's because this is Pathfinder Battles Legendary Cuts. This is Paizo. Or I guess Paizo, as you would say it. <laughs> what do we... Uh, uh, yeah, we say Paizo. Yeah. You do. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> So is is I, I I thought frameworks. So frameworks is for D and D. Frameworks is for D and D. Legendary. Okay. 
I, I wondered if Frameworks was actually just WizKids, your WizKids brand, and then everything would then go under Frameworks. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, it might have been. <laughs> we were pitching names for the it's line to changed. Wizards, and, and somebody threw out the word Frameworks, and I was like, no, that was supposed to be us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the folks at Wizards went, hey, we really like that one. Oh, okay, you can have it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we generally, just around the office, if we're talking about the entire line, so uh, Wizards and Paizo and Critical Role, we just say Sprue. Right, yeah. Sprue, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we also have, and I don't have the boxes here with me, I'm afraid, um, but we also have the Critical Role stuff coming out in Wave 2, um, at least the first part of it. Um, and we keep kind of going back and forth on the whiz kids sprue miniatures um but uh yeah my hope is that we'll be able to get some of those in in wave three or maybe wave four so have you got you've got a different name for the critical world ones as well then yes critical role is gilmore's fantastic fabrications <laughs> If you're a critical role fan, you, you get the reference hopefully immediately. So yeah, there's that's in wave two. That's also in wave two. So these are iconic characters, obviously, but uh, that's not yeah. going to be everything we do for these. We're going to do other stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> And then, I like, uh, like that the rogue. That's a really good pose. That one. Yeah, she came out really nice. There's, she's got a couple of good poses. There's only one pose on the back of the box, but yeah, you actually get two figures with this one as well. But then the big one. Oh, <laughs> that you know that was the first thing we ever painted on the, on the brush off when we started the stream. Was uh, was the goblins. Oh yeah, I love the Pathfinder goblins. Uh, they have so much character. 18 minis as well. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. So there are six minis that are the core minis, and then uh, there are three copies of each of those frames. Yeah. Um, so 18 minis. And I actually, I had a friend who's much better at math than I am uh, kind of go through the, uh, the permutations, and I think he said that there were over a thousand possible combinations. Oh, wow. Yeah, it might have been even higher. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, in theory, no two Pathfinder goblins will be exactly alike. <laughs> yeah, look, you kind of have to do the Paizo Goblin now. That's so iconic for that game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were they were very high on my list. And I'd love to see the fishbowl uh, starfinder goblin as well. That's one of my favourite yeah. miniatures. <laughs> They've done some fun stuff with their goblins. Yeah, they they have they have. I'm gonna see if I'm back. I might you be. Are back. Might not be. You are back. I'll put some tunes on so it distracts from everything. Unless it will be. Thank you for pointing it out this time. Thank you, Punky. Again. So I did just assume I was hearing that music <laughs> from my uh, computer. <laughs> Make something a bit more, a bit more chilled. Let's try this. Keep going, Steve. I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, did you see the goblins? Yeah, did you uh, no, I was I was frantically running around trying to reconnect cables and disconnect cables and look up. Look at the screen. Eighteen! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like I was saying, there's there's like six individual figures, but there's three yeah. copies of each. And as near as I can tell, and I haven't actually like you know gone through with all of them, but like most of the arms and head options are completely interchangeable with this. 
So, like I said, like I was telling uh, Steve, uh, I had a friend who's much better at math than I am, uh, kind of go through the permutations, and I think he figured out that there are over a thousand possible combinations. Hey, Kelly. Wow. So, yeah. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, I was, I was saying to JD that was the first thing we ever painted on this stream was the Peso Goblins. Yep. Uh, we have VMUs. Yeah. So we managed to talk about uh, My Balor, the new. That music's got loud or something. I can hear the music. Um, Is it too loud? I'm just going to play with the sound. Um, <laughs> sounds a bit Christmassy, that one. A little bit, yeah. It does sort of have that Hallmark movie sort of sound to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a better description, yeah. <laughs> Hallmarky, yeah. <laughs> So, Steve, so, let's, so, let's see what you've been up to, because I don't think we managed to get to your battle. Uh, so, I'm working on the body, and I'm going to be... I should have done that myself, sorry. I'm going to be layering up some colour to pick out the highlights of the flames that are around him in my imaginary head. <laughs> in your imaginary head? Yeah. So, I'm just going to be tediously painting on lots of layers of increasingly brighter shades of red, orange, and yellow. Cool. But hopefully it will be worth it in the end. This is, this is definitely not um, how we normally paint on brush off, because I'll be dry brushing it or doing it as quickly as possible. I really don't want to do it with this. I want to spend some time uh, getting something that's really really good and i can as you say put it on the shelf behind me yeah i can't imagine a, a scenario that i would torture my players with this particular beastie but um oh i can <laughs> <laughs> we have a badges barbecue coming up uh well, in about four weeks time five weeks yeah. i remember you did that um, last year as well yep so this is uh some people keep wanting wanted to call it badger con uh hmm. or uh, but we're, we're, we're keeping it as Badger Barbecue. Um, so yeah, we've got a bunch of people signed up for it already. We've got some guest DMs. We were, we were talking today about uh, the team. So we have, uh, since, since we started every year, we have um, a Battle Royale. Okay. And uh, so this year we're, we're going to do that again, but we're also going to do some something else. Uh, and I can't give too much away yet because... <laughs> we've still got to build it but uh, yeah it's going to be a lot of fun um, again check out our Instagram for if you can't make the barbecue um, just check out all the photos and videos on our Instagram however if you happen to be got the, if you got it if you're still watching this after all of those uh, problems earlier well done, thank you very much. Um, and you happen to live in the UK, and you happen to live near Gatwick, which is where we're based. Get in touch and come along to the barbecue. It's, I don't know, probably more than 24 hours of D and D and Pathfinder and just role-playing games with a bunch of strange people. <laughs> I think that part was uh, understood from the D and D and role playing. And... Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not an insult. It's kind of our strength. Yes, it is. Uh, so get in touch and come on down some, yeah, play some stuff.
So since Kelly is here, it kind of reminded me, have, uh, have either of you seen his finished Bellor? Uh, uh, yes, I think I did. It's some good stuff. It is some, well, so I was just about to say that Kelly is probably going to make me go and buy Crisis Protocol fairly soon. Because <laughs> he's been sharing with us all of the Marvel miniatures he's been painting, and, and they just look unbelievable. They really do. Yeah. Kelly is a fantastic painter. He certainly is. I, so I looked at Crisis Protocol last year and I'm and then ended up not getting it and then I went uh, quite heavily into Marvel Zombie Side. Oh, yeah. Which actually ships pretty soon, doesn't it, Dave? It's a couple of months out, I think. I think we're just a couple of months away, yeah. Oh, wow. And that will be... Uh... Yeah, I'm looking... Uh, again, I, I can't completely echo what you're saying, Steve. The, he's doing loads of Marvel stuff and I'm looking forward to... Marvel was on beside. Yeah. Just just really looking forward to, to painting those. Yeah. Yeah, so has Zombicide not actually arrived in Britain? Uh, the game, Zombicide, yes, has been out for a while. Um, you, we've Marvel got the regular, Zombicide, I mean, you know. Uh, the, not the Marvel one, no. Oh. Um, the Kickstarter is still to, to be distributed. Oh, wow. We, we've seen a few painters who have ha um, had access to it and from the, the very kind of demo models that they had. And, that, uh, well, and there was wave one has shipped oh yeah the, we, yeah. we yeah, um, had to pay extra for that yeah <laughs> uh, it's, and, it's, it's and, and on top of the shipping to the UK as well it was quite a lot extra oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that but actually it's gone it's gone really quick it's um it's shut by I, I'm, I am still waiting for Kickstarters from a long, long time ago. <laughs> I've got, um, where we're talking about Pezo, I have Pathfinder Arena coming as well, and that has a bunch oh, of, yeah. that has a bunch of miniatures in there. I don't actually know how many miniatures it contains because they kept doing stretch goals and unlockables. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, every miniature Kickstarter I've pledged to has been like that. Yes, especially the only, the games. The only the only uh, real benefit with Pathfinder Arena um, was that is because it's being manufactured in Italy, I believe. Mm -hmm. So the shipping to the UK was not horrendous. So anything that's done in Europe. Uh, we get much, much better shipping rates than when it's done in the States or Canada. And weirdly enough, it's exactly the opposite for us. Yeah. There you go. If uh, if anyone is watching live and you are painting, do let us know what you're painting with us. Uh, share them on Instagram if you if you're on Instagram. Uh, likewise, if you have any questions for JD, do let us know. Or any of uh, us, really. Yep. It can be a <laughs> painting question. It can be a whiz kids question. Why? Well, thank you, Kelly. There you go. And if you have comments, do share them and we can put them up on screen as well. Hmm. 
<laughs> For a moment, I was thinking Nightbot had a really involved question. <laughs> <laughs> When Nightbot becomes a full, fully grown AI, <laughs> don't don't be. even talk about that. Probably not that far off uh, virtual tabletops with AI GMs. That is a true statement. A local friend of mine came by recently and was telling me how he'd been playing with AI to uh, generate games for himself, basically RPGs. And um, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it was pretty clever. Um, he said that he had to tell it not to uh not to cheat on his behalf though <laughs> um because he was just winning everything he would say you know i want to i don't know destroy mars and it would say okay you've destroyed mars what next went, no no make it difficult for me <laughs> would you like to play a game <laughs> all right dragonborn barn has joined us Hey, Ian. Hey, Dragonborn, how you doing? We've been having some technical internet connection difficulties. <laughs> but we, it seems to have settled down a little bit now, so I'm hopefully uh, we are over the worst of that. Just means I have to go back and edit some of the bits when we put them on YouTube. Doing with the horns, Dave. Uh, the horns, I am going to use. Uh, I'm just doing them black because the images from Den of Imagination were gorgeous. Yeah. And <clears throat> they just they just used plain black. So I'm going with that rather than like a instead of a dark red. I'm, I'm keeping it kind of keeping it simple. I want to go full black on the horns, so you can see there. Um, all the metal chains I'm doing like gun metal, so very dark, but I want that metallic shine. So I, I'm hoping that the dark gun metal will help me differentiate between the black. Yeah. So you, you'll have the very kind of matte black, very dull, and hopefully that dark metal will just have that little bit of a shine to really stand out on the table or on display <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for if it happens great and then in between those dark colors we have the there's a few um skulls in there as well so that I'm, I'm going to I'm going to use a, just a bone color, just a normal bone color, and I think that contrast will help 
pick out the detail. <clears throat> what what you could do on on the horns is at at the base sort of come in with that bone colour or, or a brown mm -hmm. uh, just up from the sort of the bottom so the end of the horn is black and the bottom is sort of more of a bone colour to give it that sort of um, like a blend. natural look yeah so it, it then will differentiate from from the metallic uh, braces and stuff yeah Well, plus these horns, which are very kind of, um, what was that? Legend. Legend, yeah. Tom Cruise, yeah. That's it. Very uh, big. But these aren't these aren't the Hell uh, Hellraiser horns. No. Not Hellraiser. Hellboy horns. These are these are legend horns. <laughs> kind of things that get in your way when you're walking through a door. <laughs> Well, they do, don't they? I mean, they're, they're at least a foot, a foot <laughs> higher than his head. They're wider than his shoulders. I'm like, oh, sorry, everybody. You couldn't sit next to him on a bus, could you? Just be out. Look, I need three seats. He, could, he couldn't even turn sideways to go through doors with the wings on either, could he? Yeah. Well, the, the wings you can at least fold. You know, they tuck in. But. Uh, just imagining Tim Curry in, in full darkness from <laughs> job sitting on a, on a bus somewhere in London and, you know, somebody gets on and sees him and all they can think to say is, what do you do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Notice that. This is the thing, though. Is when, whenever you you paint specific parts, it's like, oh, I've, just, I've missed a bit of the flesh <laughs> right there. You have to go back and and do that, I think. Right, let's do. Oh, and the other thing I noticed as well. Um, I have I have literally been studying the uh, den of imagination. If I let me see if I bring that up again, because. It's a be it's beautiful artwork. Um, do 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 do. So here is Den of Imagination side by side. Um, something you can just see on the left picture. If you follow the torso down, you see his legs, you see his knee, then you get to his foot. He's got All like right. big black toenails. And I kind of was looking at that on on my one. It's like yeah, it's actually in the mini. The, the oh. mini has toenails, <laughs> and even better, they're sharp. <laughs> yes, they are. So I was like, they're not just toes; they're, they're yeah. So I'm gonna attempt to paint to uh, do his toenails. <laughs> so you should probably do his toenails in a uh, in a pink. <laughs> funny thing is you keep mentioning these things and I, I keep thinking oh yeah I should do that on mine too <laughs> just trying to ever so gently just hitting hitting the tips of these things it is yeah brilliant love it And also the uh, the wings have claws, oh, yeah. fingers or bone. I don't know what they are, but um, Den of Imagination did those black. So I'm doing the same thing. It's a it's a lovely effect. 
Because I was going to do them as bone. But I think that's too much exposed bone is more... <laughs> It's more undead. And I don't think he's that kind of... Uh, he's not that kind of bad one. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do one wing at a time now. So we have um, UK Games Expo coming up very, very soon. Yeah. Which is next week. And uh, WizKids are flying over. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say their names, so I won't. But there's two, two representatives from uh, the States coming over. Looking forward to meeting them both. Playing some games. It definitely confirmed Onslaught will be there. Nice. It's actually the uh, shirt that I'm wearing today. I don't know cool. if you can see that there on my screen, unfortunately. It's kind of hidden behind my painting apron. So, yeah, looking forward very much to uh, meeting some more of the team um, and learning how to play Onslaught. We've got. Um, we've also lucky enough that uh, Luke Gygax I just painted my paint pot <laughs> I'm trying to rotate him I've accidentally painted my paint pot um, Luke Gygax is also coming over so we're fortunate enough to be we're going to be playing a game we're going to be playing his latest uh, the latest episode from his his Kickstarter campaign under Gax Works, which is going to be great. Um, we will be. What are we doing? We, we, we've entered the UK Alien RPG Tournament to be official UK champions. Nice. So we, we've entered it. It probably won't happen. More than likely, <laughs> it won't. Uh, I think one of us are just is going to eject the other one out into space. I think I can just see that happening. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll screw each other over to the point where both of us go in round one or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we're, is that is actually no joke? Because the very first time I played Alien RPG was uh, we it was it was with Dave Seymour, who's actually now GMing us on a on our own. Alien RPG. So he's one of the writers, Dave Seymour, a uh, lovely guy. And we took part, this was a, this was a Dragon Meat convention uh, a few years ago. 2019. Yeah. Um, and we took part in a live podcast playing um, another team. And we were, we were in prison cells, like shared prison cells. I was in with a guy that I didn't know. And we knew we were playing Alien. That's as, about, as much about the game as I knew. And I'm in a prison cell with another prisoner, and the, the guards have basically kind of let loose some aliens and then opened the cell doors and gone, go for it. <laughs> so I decided, well, I'm, I'm going to take out my cellmate. <laughs> so I just, I just started to fight like the you whole do. session. Yes. Yeah. The whole session, we were just fighting in the cell. And I think he was desperate to get away. And at, it just ended that the alien, an alien adult, had caught up to us and um, just stood in front of our cell door. So there was definitely no escape. He kind of mouth, mouth to the head, uh, my cellmate. And with me, he just broke, broke my neck. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, now we're playing for the UK tournament in <laughs> UK championships. So I can definitely see some some stupid things happening. <laughs> some shenanigans. Oh, yes. Some mistakes were made kind of scenarios. Definitely. It has to be done.
Uh, and what else are we doing? And we're also, we're going to be playing um, Alex Kamer, who is uh, a writer and I guess owner, if you say owner, of uh, Game Hold Con in the oh, States. Okay. He's, he's also coming over. And we're going to be playing in his D&D game on Sunday. So we have, uh, yeah, three days and four nights hanging out with a whole bunch of people. Uh, and we have Peso coming over as well. And Free League and Ultra Pro and it should be a, a good time. I do miss going to conventions for exactly those reasons. I think I, uh, it's probably the first time we've really got, because we, we, we're going as press this time, and it's the first time we're really, really getting involved in terms of doing the tournaments and things. Previously, it's very much about being shopping. <laughs> uh, and, and meeting people. <clears throat> But this, I mean, this time it has really opened up in terms of the other things that are going on. Yes. I mean, there, there was a La huge Last year was, was big, but it was still big shopping, wasn't it? And, and big table, you know, play your own game sort of thing. Yeah. So there's definitely a mo lot more publishers going, uh, and there's definitely a lot more game demos going on. That's good. Right, so he can sit there and he can dry off. Now I'm going to work on the fire whip. I need to do his, do his hand. And I'm using... Ah, this is something we haven't spoken about much. Um, so this is the D&D uh, prismatic paints, uh, which are from uh, WizKids. And... Did you want to, uh, JD, did you want to have a quick chat about um, the prismatic paints? Sure, I'd love to. Because we got, there's a picture, there you go. Um, yeah. So, we've got two sets available at the moment. We've got basic and uh, intermediate, I think it was. Yes. There we go, intermediate case. What are we going to see more cases? Are we going to see like an expert case coming? Um, no plans for that at this time, okay. Um, but we'll see. Um, it'll be somebody running a. I, I've got my spinner going, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dave, Dave's paint shaker. <laughs> yeah, is somebody standing in the background with an electric razor? <laughs> yep, oh, I forgot about your, your paint agitator. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we don't we don't have any plans at this time for uh, another paint case. Um, kind of want to see how things go with the paint in general. Yeah. Um, and I don't honestly know at the moment. Uh, it's not something that has come up on my radar in the last few weeks. Um, okay. So I, I love the little pots because because I think the um, let me, let me, if I remove that there we go. Um, because the pots are so lovely, and I am a big fan of. We're, we're going to be taking these to um, UK Games Expo. Oh, nice. So <laughs> uh, previously, we we bought the Vallejo sets and the big Vallejo game paints come in those big cases, the plastic cases, which are which are great, fantastic. They're still big, and the, yeah. what I love about these ones, is, well, I've got I've got the intermediate here. They're so diddy, and it's perfect <laughs> for conventions. Um. I, I hadn't thought of it in quite those terms. We had different reasons yeah. for making them small, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's good to know. But I had a question. So we have an answer. Uh, we had um, I did I did an unboxing video of these when they first turned up because um, mm -hmm. I liked them so much. But I had my my day job as a, a designer. I also do user experience and product design and stuff like that. Now the label is on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> 
So and the the hinges, uh, the hinges on is on there. The switch, uh, the clasps are on this side. So when I open it up, I lose my label, and it's also now upside down. So I would like to see if it's at all possible, <laughs> and another label on the inside, because my OCD kicks in, and I want to know where they are. I feel like I've had this conversation before with you. <laughs> yes, I think on, on lots of things. <laughs> it's like, where is it? But that, that's, that's the, uh, that was my only feedback on this, is which you know, I've opened it up, and I said, oh, okay. And so, again, it's a lovely little, um, uh, I'm gonna call it the convention case because we're gonna be doing some painting at the UK Games Expo. Um, it's lovely for that, because it's so small. You, I don't know how many paints are in there. There's quite a lot. 30 in each. Yeah. Um, and you've got some base paints, you've got some colors, there's some metallics, there's some, I think there's some wash in there now as well. Uh, it's a lovely set, both of them, basic and intermediate, lovely sets. Um, but yeah, that was my, that was my thing. Cause when I have this out open on the table in front of me, I have to, you know, some of it you can see on the camera, you can see which, which is green, which is blue. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, okay, which blue am I after? I'm after Royal Navy Blue or something like that. It'd be nice to have that list of names on the inside of the, of the lid. Yeah, the trick I think is that there's no guarantee that those, gonna, those are gonna be in exactly the same place in every, in every one. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, adding that little extra step of Confirming that you know those match up to the uh, the list on the inside of the lid would be, yeah, extra time, extra money. Yeah. E even if it was, um... oh, that's not going to go on. Even if it was uh, just a sticker, and then I can manually rearrange things, I think it'd be handy. Yeah, uh, but it's it's very. It's a uh, fair suggestion. It's very 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 nice. Yeah, I know that the the bottles are uh, they are not standard. Um, they are a smaller size, mm -hmm. and part of the reason we did that was not necessarily you know for the portability aspect of the cases, but just for the fact that I think that there is this is my theory, um, this is my belief about the the miniature painting uh, experience. Um, People who want to paint entire armies that are all the same color, you know, with Warhammer or, you know, Stargrave, Frostgrave, whatever, um, they tend to go for the bigger bottles because you get the same color and it lasts longer and yep. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but people who are out for the painting a DD and d miniature experience, I think those people don't need quite as much paint. Yep. And I think that every person out there who's been painting for longer than a couple of years understands that sooner or later you're going to start getting uh dried up paint in those bottles um, and the smaller the bottle the more likely you are to use it before it gets to that stage yeah makes sense nice, nice so that was kind of the philosophy that went into the, the choice behind the uh the eight milliliter bottles Waving. <laughs> hello, 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 buddy. Right, let's see if this works. There we go. Let's try that. Some of the paint I'm using, like this bottle right now, I don't even remember what this color originally was. This is just something that I decanted <laughs> from its original bottle into this little dropper, and yeah. didn't think to uh, actually say, you know, this is I don't know, plum red or whatever. 
Um, but I've had this bottle for over a decade. Wow. And I'm sure it's lasted that long because I haven't needed a particular shade of plum red or whatever it is all that much for over the years. Yep. I think it, there's colors that you use a lot of. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very, very, very large range of colors that you don't use very often. Yes. What we could do with his big bottles of brown uh, and probably tiny little bottles of literally every other color because that's because you're thinking fantasy yeah clothes are brown trees are brown boats are brown <laughs> roads <laughs> are brown horses are brown <laughs> In fact, the only colour we used to ever have, we used to ever see in fantasy games, were, were dragons. Everything else was brown. Mute colours. That, uh, that checks out. <laughs> Well, you know, elementals. Got to remember the elementals. Yeah, elementals, yeah. Earth elemental, brown. <laughs> <laughs> there are other kinds. <laughs> well, I did say we were probably gonna aim to finish this but we're already an hour in and bar all the technical issues today yeah nobody wants to hear your excuses finish that miniature <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be about 95 98% complete I think I'm using gunmetal, but it's so reflective now that I can't tell if it's the white <laughs> from my primer or if it's a reflection. Let's try it on here. Swap that over. See, now we have a conversation in chat about dinner. <laughs> Stuffed peppers. So coming back to those um, legendary cuts for Pathfinder. Yes. Uh, do you have any Starfinder coming out? Not yet. Uh, oh. Those are definitely on my short list to start getting in there, though. Cool. Does that does that give you more, even more variety? Because they because they have um, different types of guns as well. Oh yeah. Does it cause different design problems to solve? Um, to 
a degree. Um, you know, the good thing is that Paiso is really good about uh, giving really good illustrations for their equipment. Yep. Um, you know, oh, I, I found with I found with Peso, uh, with uh, everything that Peso does, everything is catalogued in their library system across their books. They have, it's used in in full page artwork. It's every item is has a certain amount of detail in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's stunning. <laughs> uh, Ian looks like he's uh, advocating for some Starfinder minis. <laughs> uh, I, do have a couple, I do have a couple new ones in um, the next UPM wave. So, yeah, that should be out if those aren't already. I mean, Steve, we haven't painted Starfinder for a while now. No, we haven't. It's only in my head because you mentioned the uh, fishbowl goblin. Yeah. Steve. Uh, Dragon Lance tomorrow. Yep, it's back. The next, the next part of a Dragon Lance campaign. As we were betrayed at the end of the last episode. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sense of bitterness there. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I'm I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's uh, it will be it will it should be will be. A nice, a nice relaxed game. Because uh, <laughs> you get to uh, a lot has been going on, so now you get to sit back and have a chat about it. Do some shopping if you need to. Yeah, the the last session it was two hour combat weren't it? It was a big fight. Yep, that, was, that got a little bit intense. He did. Finished on two hit points. Oof. Ian enjoyed it quite a bit. Thank you, Ian. Well done. Oop, just dropped the battle. Um, yeah. He, this, uh... he, Ian had a couple of clutch plays, actually. Uh, and Josh with their defensive uh, reaction magic. I could not roll all night. It was horrible, horrible. No, you had some really bad rolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been there. I have done that. 
there have been times when I rolled so badly that I had to stop and check and make sure that there were actually, you know, it was actually a D20 and not a D10 with 20 sides. <laughs> I, I've, I have rolled a D12 before. <laughs> That was something I feel like the uh, the original uh, boxed sets for basic D and D did really well. So they had the dice of different sizes in different colors, and for those yeah. of us who weren't, you know, color impaired, um, that made it easy to be able to say, "Oh yeah, it's it's the, the pink one or the blue one or whatever." I'm sure Pazer did something like that as well. In their, one of their starter box sets. Pathfinder 1, first edition. Um, it was, uh, you mentioned the, the box sets. Um, I, what have I got? Um, it wasn't the box sets. There's a, the, the rod, was it? The rod of seven parts. Was a box set for D and D. Madness at Gardmore Abbey. Men's of Baranzan. Whoa. The name <laughs> that no one could pronounce when it first came out. Like, what is this? What is what is Menzo? 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 Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and and now you, you hear you hear people trying to go. What is this? Where's the drow come from? Oh, they come from Men's of Baranzan. <laughs> Just flows off a tongue, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, one of the things, and I think I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if it was Wiz Kids, but there used to be. Um, uh, it wasn't like a box set, but it was a set where you get a short story, um, or, or a, like a setting, and you had the miniatures, which you could buy separately, and it was like a like a battle. I'm sure it was for third or fourth edition. And they were really, really good. Uh, I can't remember their name. I could, I'm sure I've got some behind me somewhere on the bookshelf. But you had to buy uh, the, the dungeon run. And it says, right, the, the bad guys start here, the good guys start here. Your objective is this. And go for it. Steve, Steve's, you can hear Steve breathing because he's gone into concentration mode. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to play tiny little bits now. So JD, what's your what's next on your to be painted list? Well, uh, PaizoCon starts tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I am uh, if everything works out right, and you know I can get my tech to cooperate, and you know all of that sort of thing. Um, I actually have these guys that I'm going to try to paint on stream, and those are the. Six of the goblins from the uh, from the Pathfinder Legendary Cuts goblins. Very nice. And that male human wizard. 
Very nice. And uh, yeah, as fast as I paint, I will not finish these in the one hour I've been allotted. So I'm going to pick one, probably a goblin, and uh, plow through. Cool. Do you have anyone painting with you, or is it is it just you? I think it's just me. It's a lonely job, but someone has to do it. Yep. For Peso Con, they should at least have some volunteers. <laughs> you, you drag them up on stage. Get them onto the uh, shared... Shared stage? Shared yeah. stream. The virtual yeah. stage. What, uh, what time are you painting? Um, six o'clock local time, 6 p.m. So very late in the evening for you. Yeah, 2 a.m. Early the next morning. Yeah, yeah 2 a.m. Yeah. But I'm sure you'll be awake, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have just awesome. finished digesting all of the events of tomorrow night's Dragon Arts stream. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll set my VCR. <laughs> That's what my kids say when I say. Oh, we, we won't chat now. We'll tape it. <laughs> what are you talking about? What's the tape? What do you mean, dial a phone? <laughs> So, JD, out of the new uh, Wave 2 Legend... Well, is it wave, Is it Legendary Cuts Wave 2 or Wave 1 or Frameworks Wave 2? <laughs> Sprue, it's Sprue all, it's, Wave 2? It's all Sprue Wave 2. Sprue Wave 2, okay. Uh, do you have a personal favourite? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really like these goblins. Yep. Um, they are very much on my short list. Uh, and even if I only paint one of these tomorrow, I'm sure I will spend the rest of the weekend painting as many of them as I possibly can. And it's a holiday weekend for us, so uh, that means that I have extra time on Sunday evening to paint. Good, good. But uh, I'm thinking, I'm strongly leaning towards this guy. Because he has the nice uh, flames coming off of his hand. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, really like those. Uh, the I'm trying to remember, we split wave two, so some of the stuff is in wave two and some of it's in wave three, but um, the stuff that really stands out to me, we've got a, uh, a pit fiend. Cool. Um, that looks really good. Um, there's a chimera that I really like. Ooh, that's something a little bit different. We don't often yeah. see those kind of things. Yeah. Um, I think. The centaur is in wave three. The centaur is kind of nice. It's got um, it's got the the one horse body, but then you have a choice of a male or female human torso to put on it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, to summon the mental image of all the stuff that I've got uh, on my screen uh, in the other room. <laughs> yeah, the troll finally comes out. That was originally going to be a wave one guy, and we pushed him back to wave two. So the troll looks really good. The troll does look like a uh, again a great pose, a great sculpt. Yeah, yeah. Our sculptors are really good at this. I know a lot of the detail. Sadly, uh, at least it used to. This is not the case so much more. A lot of the detail that those guys put into things really stands out. Um, it's just really amazing, and I, that's one of the things I really like about the frameworks, the the sprue miniatures. Is this polystyrene really holds that detail well. Yep. But yeah, the, the primer on the um, the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures and so forth. Um, like I said, early on it was not as good, and I think a lot of people have taken that uh, to be, you know, 
oh, that's the standard for the line. It's really not. Um, it was just kind of us dialing things in. Um, but now that it's dialed in, uh, yeah, everything I've seen lately has had really good priming. The details stand out really well. Um, but again, God love the God love the polystyrene. Uh, Kelly says, <clears throat> let's put it on the screen. Kelly says, I'm super looking forward to the female human barbarian, the male Goliath barbarian, the chimera, and the fire giant. Oh, the fire giant. Yes. Yes. That fire giant is so impressive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of at the outer limits of what we can fit into a... Uh, a, a box of sprue when it comes to giants um, beyond that they start getting so big that the box just gets huge it's a little bit of a different story when you know you have to have all the parts in there yep i think you mentioned last time um it was there you're trying to find ways of doing dragons but because the dragons are so big yeah at least the adult dragons obviously you know we could probably yeah. pull off some young dragons and it, it will be fine but um, yeah the uh, the initial idea that we had was hey let's do some let's do some adult dragons that'll look great and uh yeah they're they are monstrously huge as they should be How you doing, Steve? Yep, I'm all right. <laughs> Just layering away. Let's try and remember where my camera is. There, no, there, there we go. No. If it helps, it's pointed right at you. <laughs> oh, that's looking fantastic, Steve. Oh wow! We make it, Steve. Uh, make it bigger. So, how? Talk us through it. What have you done? My mouse has gone to sleep. <laughs> I I have uh, just layered up with um, various shades of red, orange, and yellow, and then a little bit of pink at the end. That uh, is so just... It looks a bit bright, but I'm going to put a wash on it. I may have to strip mine and start all over again. <laughs> You're making me look bad, Steve. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to do, and I've got it a bit wet at the moment, is uh, is put some blue on the other side. Because uh -huh. uh, I've done the sword with a bit of lightning on it. So I want right. to pick up, pick up some of that blue light on that side. Yeah, that's always tricky, that uh, two different OSL colors. It, yes, it is, yeah. And I, I have made the paint far too thin. <laughs> Get some water on that, take it off. Okay, we are down to the last half hour. <laughs> Thank you for the comments in chat. And I like Kelly's last one. He says, uh, <laughs> yes, oh, I've made myself big and I haven't gone away. Right, let's put that back. Here we go. He said, uh, yes, up, up that contrast, Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a completely random question for uh, for those of you over there in uh, in that other country, on the other <laughs> side of the of the ocean. Um, 
this came about as a result of a conversation I was having in the meeting I was in just before this. Um, spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Uh, has nothing to do with anything WizKids does. It just popped up as a random topic in a conversation. When you think your spaghetti is done, how do you test it? Uh, I, I take one strand out of the pan and, and, and eat it. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's purely done on um, how hard it is. Yes. Right, al dente. As in al dente, yes. yes. Yeah. Dave, same answer? Different answer? Two uh, two. It, it's definitely uh, about the hardest. But um, yeah, it's... it's um, uh, I don't. I don't taste it first. I don't do what Steve does. But uh, yeah, it's it's it's. <laughs> There's no easy way to say it. It just sounds rude. If it's soft and floppy, it's probably okay. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I. I. That's pretty much the way I I test yeah. mine. I... Because it, it's the. Um, the spaghetti is, uh, we use dry, um, I don't know, dry packet spaghetti. You, you take it out of the packet, you break it in half, you put it into your pan, you take yeah. it to the boil, add a pinch of salt, um, and you're ready to go, but yeah. So now, if, we're, if we're talking bolognese, then that's different. Well, the question came about because somebody was describing their husband's method of testing spaghetti using a method that I personally have never bothered trying um, because it sounds even worse than soft and floppy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that my parents used to talk about doing this. I never actually saw them do it, but they talked about it. The, throw, it uh, the throw it against the wall and see if it's yeah. a nice method. And yeah. I just wondered, you know, is that a purely American thing? Is that something no. that other people do? No, Ian, Ian has posted that as well. Yeah. Is that it's what you do, of, Ian? You do it for fun. It's something that we do to show the kid kids how to cook. It, <laughs> it, it has no pure... Uh, but that's a very specific value. lesson, right? You don't, like, yeah. you know, finish... Baking a goose, roasting a goose, and throw it against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't stick. It's not done. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a waste of the roast. But um, it's, it's when it's when adults, it's when parents um, or adults or teachers are just trying to psychopaths. Uh, yeah, yeah it impress a child about how to cook properly, and <laughs> and making it completely bemused by throwing the food at a wall, saying. It's ready now, <laughs> and then and then you horrify them by scraping it back off the wall and put it on their plate. Right. <laughs> I think that's more about you know kind of an object lesson and think about it when you touch the walls, kids. Yep. Um, but yeah. All right. All right. I, I well, just I wanted to see how universal it was because the uh, the people in the meeting were kind of divided on that. I think what we need to see, though, is more school, uh, more school dinners being served in that way. <laughs> Just it take a hand, handful of spaghetti, <laughs> throw it at a wall, scrape it off, put it on the plate, give it to the kid, and say, "There you go. It's it's ready now." Perfect. <laughs> when that child goes to the head teacher and complains, they say, "No, that's how you that's how you test it." <laughs> I can take that back to my co-workers and, and, and tell them that those of them who uh, who cook spaghetti that way, test spaghetti that way, uh, are in fact acting like children. Yep. It is done to horrify your kids. That's what it is. I, I can't believe you snap it in half before putting it in the pan. 
Uh, yeah, I, yeah, that bothered uh, me a little bit, but I let it go. <laughs> no, I've always done that. It's just snap it in half, you know, throw it in the pan. Because that way it fits. Oh. It fits quicker, so it cooks quicker. You know they make larger saucepans. Yeah, but I don't have one, so... <laughs> <laughs> Got to make my food fit. I thought, I'm not going to say anything, because then I'm just going to sound weird. But that did bug me, that you break your... <laughs> yeah, see, it's the same. That made my skin crawl. <laughs> That's how you cook. Thank you for validating my my opinion there. <laughs> validating uh, your horror. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel so alone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've discovered that uh, if you just put the spaghetti in. Even if some of it is sticking out, it doesn't take very long for that to soften up and eventually make its way to the water. Yeah, I know it's weird, but there you go. I would love to hear what your <laughs> when, when you go back to your meeting tomorrow and say, "Yeah, I had a chat with Badgers." Uh, <laughs> we're we'll talking about spaghetti. Can you believe Dave just breaks it in half? I mean. <laughs> So uh, how is his painting? Don't care about the painting. He breaks spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, if I you... won't be going on that show. <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say, if, if you never see JD here again, that, <laughs> that's, that's why. why. <laughs> <laughs> I just, he's gonna, we're going to end the stream. He's going to throw his paintbrushes down. Like, Break spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti breakers. How dare they? We might upset Vallejo. They're Spanish, so yes, you probably will. Barbarian Dave. <laughs> hey, don't, oh make my God. Don't, make me, don't make me hungry. It's forgetting I've had to scroll when up. I've missed so much of this. <laughs> there's um, there's an there's an animated adult film called Sausage Party. <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, uh, which is which is I I think it's a great film. I think it's very 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 funny. But uh, yeah, if spaghetti was in that film. <sighs> That, that would be me. Right, let's get some... Uh... Let's see if I'm gonna Dave, Dave, is, Dave is a bad hand at a bacon sandwich. I, I, I make good bacon sandwiches. Many, 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 many years ago, we also, uh, we also used to run a uh, another club, uh, which we used to run was for LAN gaming. And we used to play Counter-Strike and all those games. Oh, yeah. Um, and in the in the place we used to go to, uh, we, all the guys, I'm, I'm not technically minded. <laughs> so the, everyone was setting up the cables and setting everything else. I'd be in the kitchen making bacon rolls for everyone. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that, that was my job. Which is probably what has led us to the barbecue because I completely believe that if you if you want to game properly, you need the right food. Oh, absolutely. The uh, the two times that I ran the Alien RPG, uh, and I just did the Hadley's. Yeah, Hope's Hadley's last day. Yeah, Hope's last day. Hope's yeah. last day. Um, I just ran that. Um, but uh, yeah, my wife and I. Um, we actually bought uh, some uh, MREs 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Meals ready to eat. And uh, yeah, I, I told people, you know, look, you don't have to eat these. But if you do, I will give you a little in-game bonus. Let you have a re-roll here and there. And uh, <laughs> one of my players uh, was in the army. Uh, he had actually fought in uh, uh, Afghanistan, not Afghanistan, Iran, um, yeah. back in the day. Um, back before I met him. Uh, and uh, he said, that's kind of an unfair advantage for me. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, my wife and I, when we have game days, uh, RPG sessions, whatever, you know, board game days, we tend to uh, try to come up with themed meals. That's, That's a great, great idea. Tool. Have you enjoyed the the various cookbooks that came out over recent years? Uh, I'm going to have to say no, because I don't know which ones you're talking about. There's There's been a, num a number of... Um, uh, you can get them on Drive Through RPG and like that but there's been a number of, of fantasy cookbooks or D&D okay. inspired didn't they yeah for, uh, oh yeah Avernus yeah uh, and also um, uh, Stashwick if you're if you're a fan of Star Trek uh, Stashwick who is in uh, the Picard finale okay. uh he has a cocktail, fantasy cocktail book. Nice. I think my next cookbook purchase, uh, I can't remember the name, I've got it on my Amazon wish list, but uh, there's a, uh, a guy I see, I've seen on uh, Instagram who um, he finds old recipes from like the 1800s or sorry the 1900s early 1900s to 1980 yeah. um and just makes them verbatim uh and the ones he's made so far most of them sound pretty good uh, you know i don't know about uh great britain uh, but in the 60s uh party cuisine in the united states was absolutely insane uh yeah. you know hey we figured out a way to put you know checks mix into jello Oh, that sounds disturbing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not just stuff like that. It's, you know, like uh, the one that really caught my attention. I used to be really big into uh, baking. I would make chocolate chip cookies for just about any occasion. Um, and yeah. he found a recipe that uses bacon grease instead of butter. Uh, what? Yeah. So basically you get bacon flavored chocolate chip cookies. Wow. Did it? Did you have you ever tried that? I have not yet, but I am so going to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of like whoa, um, okay, yeah. Um, I wonder, uh, yeah, I wonder what it would actually taste like though. Try putting bacon in your chocolate chip cookies, I guess. Yeah. That's a good indication. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Ian apparently is a vegetarian. Sorry. Bye. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Cantina13. How you doing? Uh, if you didn't know this, by the way, Cantina13, uh, check them out on Instagram. Okay. Um, because they have a very unhealthy ad addiction to unpainted minis. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they do a lot of songs about them. Um, I love watching their songs. They make these little videos, little sketches, and they sing songs about unpainted miniatures. Um, so if, if WizKids ever needs a theme tune, do consider <laughs> getting in touch with Cantina 13. Uh, very, very funny stuff. Oh, I'm looking up Cantina 13 right now. <laughs> There's a lot of Cantina 13s out here. Is it the one with the uh, the mask? No, that's no posts yet, so I'm guessing that's a no. This account is private. That's not you either, I'm guessing. Let's see if I can quickly uh, find it. Do, 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 do. If I can find it, and then if I can put it into there, it should work, he said. 
<laughs> Which one? <laughs> So Ian, given those previous two comments, uh, you know, compared to British Army rations, they are incredibly tasty. Uh, presumably, you mean the uh, American MREs, uh, and then vegetarian. That had to be difficult. Oh, here we go. So that should go uh, in there, and then I can put that on the screen. There we go. Yeah, I was trying to do this the oh, easy way. I was, yeah, I was just doing Cantina One Three. Ah, there we go. All right. Yeah. Consider yourself followed. <laughs> oh, I think I've seen a few of these before. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah actually that's uh your gray minis video yes uh, i've seen that one yeah those are good those are good actually that, uh, that that made me think of a halloween costume where i could just dress completely in gray sweats <laughs> and you know I could just show up and what are you supposed to be well, i'm an unpainted miniature and people will just give me a blank look and i say hey if you were a miniature painter that would horrify you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ian, the reason I asked is uh, I have known many vegetarians over the years, never been one myself, but um, I've known many over the years who uh, they have a really hard time with um, even just restaurants. Um, so I can imagine what, you know, uh, military food would be like. I think this has actually come out better than expected. The um, I've got here. It's it's still a little bit wet. Oh, if I... uh, sorry, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Ian's last comment is just perfect. If you know, you know. Yep. Uh, the boom. Let's, let's get a better look at the battle. So it's still a little bit wet, but. Um, so it's it's he's wearing a, his black kilt, and I've done the. Let's find, let's find another brush. It is my pencil. Um, so the metal chain and this kind of his belt buckle thing is. Um, I've done gun metal, so it's as dark as I can get. But I'm not sure if the light is going to pick it up. But the contrast between the matte black and then the shiny metallic really works really well um i'm quite surprised how good that works yeah that is look good it's it's got a little bit of glare on it on the uh, on the yeah built kind yeah, of thing there but um the loin cloth i guess but uh yeah yeah that's much better there you go that actually looks really good and it, nice. it looks like two different te textures now. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I debated quite a bit with the metal on this one. I um, I wanted to have a lot of iron on it. Yep. Um, but at the same time, I realized it's just going to be, you know, a lot of dark colors on this. So I tried to do some of each section where there was metal. Uh, to look like brass and in some cases i pulled it off like i think it looks really works really well on this this leg that looks nice yeah um but uh yeah 
it's a little harder to see in other spots. I, I am really liking the uh, gem in the end of that sword. Yeah. But just the whole sword, actually, is that, that has turned out brilliant. Thank you. It's a little touch up here and there, but uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the gem I just did uh, right at the beginning here is what we were painting today. Yeah, it's that, that old uh, Warhammer technique. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the look of that gem. I was going to do something similar, but I've done what I've done in the past for, for various gems on this bit is um, just paint it with a normal color mm -hmm. where it's red, blue, green. Uh, and then I use a gloss varnish mm -hmm. over the top. And that really, that, again, that really helps to make it look like a different texture, uh -huh. um, especially on the table. Yeah, you know, I think that after I do the dry coat on this, I'll give this a, a touch up with the gloss varnish to make it stand out. Yeah. So if I do it the other way around, I think I'll lose the, the glossiness. Let's swap them around. Yeah. I love these. Um, you got the fiery mohawk as well. That looks fantastic. Yeah, that that does look good. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to go all out with the fire on this guy. <laughs> yeah. Have you done a different... So, your first battle that you did, have you done it this one very differently, or have you kept the same kind of... This is the first one. I thought you'd... Oh, no, you've built one before. Yeah, this is the one I built. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, yeah. Right. I thought, I thought yeah, you did... This is the only one I've done. Ah. That explains some comments earlier on. I was wondering what you were talking about. Yeah, I thought it was actually a, a, the second battle, but no, it's the it's the first one. But you painted it. Yeah. Yeah, I assembled this uh, way back when when we got samples from the factory because I wanted to see how well it would go together. Yeah. Um, kind of a major concern for a company that you know had only done pre-assembled miniatures before. So. Sure. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that all the parts would go together smoothly, and so I just chose a configuration that worked. Um, and uh yeah so then i had this unpainted gray and clear valor sitting around yep so yeah when uh, i've actually intentionally left him unpainted so that i could paint him on this show <laughs> and we thank you very much for it again <laughs> uh it's always a pleasure just having you to come on have a chat and uh hang out with us do some painting yeah i love um, being here and hopefully we'll do be able to do some more. I've now checked it out. You mentioned last time we was on um, the Tempest, the trial, yeah, trials, trials of Tempest. Of Tempest. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, I'm really yeah, looking forward to seeing it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be at UK Games Expo, but uh, yeah, and it's got some of my favourite artwork on there because it's got the uh, the Sentinel guy who's just chopped off the giant's head. Yes, from um, it was used for a uh, cover art on the on one of the cover, one of the character portfolios for D and D. It was on that. It's one of the first character portfolios I bought, and I yeah. loved that artwork. Awesome. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we had to show that one to uh, wizards and say, "Is it okay if we use this?" And they were kind of taken aback because the full image is a lot gorier. Yes. <laughs> so we said we can we can crop that out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve, you are down to the last few minutes. Are you really finished? No. <laughs> I've done more than I thought I was going to. Which I'm, I'm I'm pleased with the progress I've made. But like I say, I, I don't want to rush this anyway. This is this is a project piece for me. You need to stick it up on your um, Instagram, Steve. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that enough. Actually, paint. Put the put. I, I tend to put the finished product up rather than the. I think the how tos are just the progress shots are just as in, just as impressive. 
Yeah, I have, I think I have Steve's kind of philosophy about that. Um, I like to save Instagram for my finished stuff and I'll post my works in progress on uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. um, although we did post this guy uh, right after uh, our last session together. I posted them on Instagram to show how far I'd gotten. So yeah, feel special. <laughs> Don't do that for just anybody. <laughs> so down uh, to last I'm, five minutes, Steve. I might, I might stop there. I think. I, I'm, I'm good. I got more done than what I thought I was going to do. Um, I need to reattach his hands, but uh, everything is looking good now. I've done the metallics on those, some colouring, which is really nice. I need to do that. I need to do his hand because it's on the whip. That didn't work for me, so I need to. I'm gonna have to do some hand prime, and then sort that one out. I think. On here. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, need to, <coughs> I need to hand prime that one, and then colour that in. But, yeah. yeah. Fire is looking gorgeous. Fire does look good. Um, I did. I didn't go back to the base. As far as I'm concerned, that's done. That came so out how did you do well. your fire on that one? Uh, the fire was the inks what we did last time. Um, oh, I actually yeah. followed Steve's instructions, so I did the whole thing in yellow. Uh, then I did uh, one coat of red, and then the top bit is like two or three coats of red, just to kind of get that little bit of blending. Mm -hmm. But I wanted the three distinct colours, which, which seemed to work. And then on the whip, uh, it's more of a blend. So I yeah. used a lot more water in between just to try to blend those colors together. Yeah. And that worked. Uh, I think then, I'm going to take some white ink, like not mine there too. Yeah. But yeah, that's, I, I, I really like that. I, I like the way you've got the orange on both sides or red on both sides. That looks good. Very good. Yeah, that's looking really good. But yeah, he is... Uh, He's looking, he is looking pretty vicious. I need, I need to do, I haven't done his face. I need to do his teeth. Uh, and get some, uh, some more detail around the, around the face. Cause that is, he is pretty vicious in there. <laughs> yeah, I might have to drop a little bit of dry brush on there actually to pick out the details. Cause yes. it's, it's, Oh, I haven't got my thing on, so I can't see it very well, but um, there's definitely like teeth, nostrils, and the eye sockets and stuff like that to pick out. Yeah, yeah, and the, the nostrils are on the sides as well. Yes. They're nice, nice and big, but yeah, the eye sockets are really nice and deep. They've got some, yeah. Um, and, and then you've got the teeth that sort of protrude, protrude out, haven't you? It looks like as well. They're, some some yeah. sort of tusks, almost. Yes. I think you can yeah. just about see them there. Yeah, they are again stunning so what we do is we'll, we'll put some more photos of this up on to our instagram so do go and check that out everybody uh, please do i'm just trying to find the thingy me biggie bob there we go Boop. there it is instagram.com <laughs> slash band of badges um this video will be going up on youtube over the weekend we have uh some other bits coming up so tomorrow if you join us live we'll be doing our dragon arts campaign join us again on saturday night for a finale of our alien rpg alenia bay written and gm'd by alien rpg writer dave seamark um so come and join us for that and then next week we won't be here because we're going to be um at the uk games expo uh, reporting live um, as we talk to loads and loads and loads of people, we're going to be taking loads of photos, loads of videos. We'll do some of it live if we can. It all depends on Wi-Fi signal, um, about how it, how what it, how what it does, how what it goes. Uh, yeah, which I think we just keep on keep on trying things until it all actually works out. Steve, any anything from you? Uh, no. Please join us tomorrow for for Dragon Lance. Having a great time playing that campaign. Uh, a really good group. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we're moving into the next chapter now. So Bakaris uh, has 
made, made one last stab in the back and then departed uh, for, for the time being. Uh, I'm not See, bitter in any way. I told you it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, so, so, so tomorrow night, well, I guess we deal with Fallout. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been such a fun, fun, relaxing game uh, as well. Because normally, like when we're streaming them, it's not always relaxing. You get a bit nervous, and then you got time constraints. There's been none of that with this with this game. It's uh, it's it's been really good. Just a lot of fun. <laughs> See, insane Randy is dead to me now. <laughs> There's Dragon, Dragon Ball on. Yeah, Randy is dead to him now. Um, so we. But here's, here's a moment. Look, Dave, your painters has come such a long way. Thank you very much. <laughs> you uh, had to go a long yes, way up the list for that. It, it, it has. <laughs> <laughs> you you must right have started that start. one. I'm going to go back to that yeah. later. Um, and we fin- we we'll, we'll leave it on this one. So when are you back next, JD? Oh, I don't know. When do you want me? Um, I don't know. Just come back as a regular. Just <laughs> <laughs> Every <laughs> Thursday <laughs> afternoon, all right? Yeah, yeah I'm sure that'll play. We can, we can, we can arrange something. Um, the yeah, something got, else we do, this. as well as our uh, as well as our campaigns, we are uh, in our Dragonlance campaign. We are now opening up our guest player seat. So I know this is painting, but if, if anyone wants to, if you're watching this and you kind of hear this or stumble across this bit, um, get in touch. It doesn't matter who you are. If you just want to come and play and hang out with us, if you like what we do. You want to play um get in touch and we'll put you in a guest seat you can either bring an npc to life you could bring your own character jump from your campaign to our campaign um or i've got some uh, some characters i need to, i need to be uh, introduced into the game so you can be one of them as well uh, but jd if you fancy playing uh come along for a session we will we will do we don't use the miniatures on this one because we're saving those for the table game but this is all online um a good little bit of fun still us still us only, only two hours but uh, uh anyone and everyone is welcome but if you have any specific you want to paint we would love to paint more uh, we know that uh sprue wave two is coming um yeah what whatever whatever you throw at us we'll happily att- attempt to paint <laughs> That's the best. It's the best I can offer. Really, we can attempt to paint it. Well, I feel like we <laughs> should do it. the fire giant from Wave Two, but you know, if that's also kind of repetitive, there's going to be even more fire and you know, large figure again. So you know, we'll have to see. You have to see. Yeah, we'll give it a go. A, uh, the first offering for uh, Gilmore's Fantastic Fabrications from Critical Role is a uh, a Cyclops Stormcaller. Familiar with that, so that's a nice big figure, and you know, this time we can exercise our blues instead of our reds and yellows. (laughs) I'm up for it. Uh, I've got some (laughs) paints. I've got my, uh, I've got my intermediate case. There you go. go. Upgraded from basic to intermediate. There we go. I don't think I am. I think I'm still a basic painter, but uh, I'm learning loads, which is which is the whole point. Um, Loving it all. So we will leave you all. People, uh, thank you for watching live. Thank you for letting us share your, uh, whatever you've been painting with us, share it on Instagram. Do hit us up. Uh, JD, uh, shout out what your Instagram is. Jedi Wiker. J-E-D-I-W-I-K-E-R. There you go. So check out JD on Instagram. Um, he's he's going to put some special stuff up for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he saves normally for his Facebook group. But hey, he's not going to put them on for us. There we go. Uh, Steve, where can people find you? Uh, here. There you go. Yeah, it's right there. It's like <laughs> below right hand <laughs> corner of the screen. Steve, uh, Steve I, doesn't I, do I do have an Instagram that doesn't really get used much. Uh, and I can't remember what the username is anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about mine, so I get it. <laughs> uh, but so, you'll find me here on streams. Uh, good. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Steve. I, was, I, it. I think, was it last, <laughs> last time we played uh, we played Dragon Lance? I think I might have said I was, a, was an AI, and you you just switched me on when we're when we're ready to go live. That is true. Yeah, you're not. Uh, you, I was, <laughs> was going to say you're not one of the smart AIs. <laughs> no, I'm not one of the smart AIs. No. <laughs> we'll save that till next time. Uh, yeah, you, you end, can well, do we... use you insulting of me tomorrow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I'm trying to save it. I build it up. 
and then <laughs> then I can I can just let everyone share in the uh, glory of just <laughs> annoying you <laughs> <laughs> like on live on stream um, so <laughs> we thank you very much for watching we're gonna leave it there we've had enough jibber jabber we'll see you next time um great British bar off remember find us on YouTube youtube.com slash band badges like subscribe and next week we're at UK games expert uh, we'll see you next time bye bye